Hello movie mavens, welcome back to another video on the B Movies channel. My name is Bailey and I put the B in movies. I hope you are all having a wonderful week. I'm having a good week, but I don't know if it's just me, but this week has dragged. I feel like every single day was like 47 hours long, uh, but we've made it here to Saturday, which as a reminder, if you're wondering why a video did not go up yesterday, just a friendly reminder, if you didn't see on Instagram, we are going to switch release days to Saturday at 2 p.m. And if you're wondering why that's that change has been made, it's because YouTube has been taking forever to check our videos. And it started happening a couple of videos ago. And so usually I would record Thursday night, early Friday morning. So that that way, if there were any announcements or any updates on any of our favorite horror, uh, uh, analog horror series, um, horror ARGs, any big news, if there were any movies I was going to see, so that that way I could give you as much coverage for the week as possible. But now YouTube is for some reason taking forever to upload our videos. It may just be because, you know, we're getting more subscribers. We've been around for almost a year, which is crazy. And so we decided to push release instead of pushing it up a day, pushing it back a day so that that way we could make sure that we still had more time to cover everything coming out that week. So just TLDR videos are now going to be uploaded Saturday at 2 p.m. I am hoping <laughs> unless um, again, if the checks take too long, it's not a big deal. Just know that unless we tell you otherwise, a video will be out that week. Like I know we had that one week. A week or two ago when I had Fovid, um, which I've been affectionately calling my faux COVID. Um, so just know that if there's not going to be a video that week, we will tell you there will not just be silence. So even if it's late or anything like that, look at Instagram. If there's no announcement, that means there is a video coming that week. So uh, that's all I really have to say. I don't really have a lot for Bailey Babbles this week. Um... Don't really have anything to babble about this week. Again, that's it's been a normal week. It was just kind of, like I said, it just kind of dragged for me personally. But other than that, not a lot to complain about. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get right to it. Uh, so if you are new here, hi, hello. Uh, just to, to kind of intro quickly. Uh, the B-Movies channel is a continuation of the B-Movies blog. We release new pieces every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Occasionally, like this week, I'll get a last minute idea to tweak a piece or add to a piece. So there's also a piece coming out today. Wednesday's piece is coming out this morning. And you can find all of those pieces at bmovies.blog. And I will always link that and the five pieces for this week in the description box below. You can also subscribe to the B Movies blog to have those sent directly to your inbox. If not, they will just live at bmovies.blog. We have over 300 blogs up. Uh, we've been doing this for a year and a half on the blog. The channel turns a year old in a matter of weeks, which is nuts. Um, so that's just that that's just to lead into our blog roundup for the week. That's just kind of who we are. And yeah, that, that's just who we are. So first up, we have our blog roundup for the week. So on Monday, we talked about fashion forward movies. So, you know, like Devil Wears Prada, um, Romy and Michelle, I included because, you know, they start a boutique and they make all of their clothes. And so just movies like that, that either inspired a phase in your fashion life, which I know some of these movies definitely inspired mine, or, you know, they're focused on the fashion industry, like Phantom Thread I included. So there are definitely some good picks on that list. Um, on Tuesday, we talked about office movies. Uh, there's everything from the Belko experiment to office space. So if you're looking to Clock Watchers with uh, Tony Collette and Park Posey, if you're not familiar with that one, it's very good. So that way, if you just need to find something relatable or over the top to blow off some steam after your job, we have a list for you. Uh, Thursday, we talked about the Brendan Leonard show, which if you don't know, all the way back in 2003, Brendan Leonard was a teenage kid who had a local cable access show 
And for one gleaming moment, for one gleaming season of 16 episodes, um, ABC gave him a run on their network. And the quote that I have in the piece, it talks about like how at times it kind of feels like a youth group did a G rated jackass. And I feel like that's, I feel like it's undercutting it a little bit, but it also just made me laugh very hard. Um, the way I described it is like, think about like early sketch comedy on YouTube, like early Smosh. But if you had someone kind of like Seth Cohen at the helm, because it's music heavy, they have on the series, it's a band of the day. And it's like any, anywhere from like small indie bands to like bands that were indie back then that are no longer indie. And it's just a fun time. It's technically lost media because you can't really find the episodes anywhere. You can find clips and like I included from Brendan Leonard's YouTube channel, a lot of clips, but it's considered lost media because the full episodes, like as they appeared on ABC, even though the website is still live, you can't find them anywhere. And it also, I'm thinking about making this a potential series called Lost and Refound Media. So if you have any ideas, drop them in the comments bo comment box below. And Elliot and I really, Elliot really loved this idea. I really like this idea. And so definitely check that one out. Um, on Friday, which today, it will also be our deep dive today, we did another edition of Lights, Camera, Albums. Um, My Chemical Romance's Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge turned 20 this year, which don't, don't, don't. <laughs> um, so <laughs> don't talk to me about it. So I thought what better entry into Lights, Camera, Albums than My Chemical Romance because we've not covered a My Chemical Romance album yet. We've done Fall Out Boys from Under the Cork Tree, but we have not done a My Chemical Romance album. And so we will go through all of those songs and more about what Lights, Camera, Album is if you're not familiar later on in our deep dive. And then today, so this week, I... I went on a journey with the piece that's going out to going out today because long story short, there was actually another piece I was going to upload, but then I saw long legs, which by the title we're talking about long legs. Obviously we are talking about it. I went to an early screener of long legs on Tuesday and I was like, I want to do a completely different piece. <laughs> And really hone into like the true crime aspects. And so today we are going to do another edition of turning uh, songs into movie plots. And that series. We only have one entry so far. But I'm like I really want to do another one of these after watching Long Legs. I felt very inspired. So that's what is up today. Um, and it should be linked in the description box below by the time this video goes live. But if it's not you'll see it coming soon. Um placeholder instead of the link and as soon as the piece is live I will replace that so just to recap <coughs> excuse me just to recap this week over on the B movies blog fashion forward movies office movies the Brendan Leonard show lights camera albums with my chemical romances three cheers for sweet revenge and um turning songs into movie plots too so next up it's time for our bite-sized Sunday teaser Again, if you're new here, Bite Size Sundays are little tiny reviews that live over on our Instagram, which is just at BMovies channel, same as our YouTube. And these are things that I want to talk about, but I don't necessarily have enough to say for a full piece. And so those are released on our Instagram around 8 or 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And um, again, just live on Instagram. And so you can only get the teaser here which is another perk of subscribing to our YouTube channel. So this week's Bite Size Sunday teaser is more like an alive stream. Am I right? Um, I'm very excited to talk about this one because I think it, it's a fun one. So I'm excited to talk about it. So that should do us up top for housekeeping. So let's go ahead and dive into today's deep dive. So deep dives, this is where we just go in depth about a piece that I've written for the B-Movies blog for the week or we talk about something that's adjacent like for example like when we do the uh am, am I the bunghole movie plots I'll do stories from Reddit 
we've done when we had a week where we did a lot of nostalgia pieces i talked about the nostalgia snacks i wish would come back so on and so forth so to kick us off we are going to do um our deep dive of my chemical romances three cheers for sweet revenge which is this week's lights camera albums so if you're not familiar with this series, this has been the longest ongoing series on B-movies. It's also, I think, the most popular series that we do, where I take an album and I go track by track and I pair each track on the album with a movie. Sometimes it's very easy to see how I made that connection. Sometimes you're going to tilt your head, squint a little bit and say, girl, I good for you, but... Um, <laughs> I just really wanted to do this, my script just froze. Um, so let's see a little behind the, uh, behind the, <laughs> behind the scenes magic. Um, so I just really wanted to do this one, like I said, because My Chemical Romance, this album was A for me. This was a huge album for me growing up. I was very much, and I mean, we've talked about this before, I was a huge Hot Topic kid. Like, I grew up right in that wave of pop punk. So, like, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, Evanescence, Linkin Park, um, Simple Plan, The Works. Like, that's what I grew up in. And so, between that and the anniversary, I was like, I really want to to tackle this one. So, a couple things up top, now that my, fr my script has unfroze because that was horrifying um just a couple things up top so if you aren't familiar with this album there are a lot of references to si to to Susie, um to self-harm so some of the movies i picked reflect that and so i just want to as always like please know i'm never making light of the content um, that's something again, like I, you know, just be honest, like I have clinical depression. Like I, I don't, I joke about it in like our, in like a millennial dark humor way, like a lot of us do, but like, I would never make light of subject matter like that. And if I ever joke, it's about myself. It's a joke about my own depression. It's never about other people. So I just want to make that clear that like, I'm not here. Some of these movies are very heavy, not here to make light of that content. Um, also I tried to pick a lot of what I call hot topic coded or hot topic adjacent movies. If you grew up in hot topic, like I did, you know what I'm talking about, like The Crow, Tim Burton. Um, and then there were other movies that I felt like were kind of hot topic adjacent, like Jawbreaker. I feel like if you were a millennial that grew up with this album and you're in your early thirties, like me, Jawbreaker was a huge movie for you. Uh, movies like The Virgin, Sisses. I, I don't think I can even say the movie title on YouTube. I'm not trying to be funny. I just can't say the word. Um, I feel like it's like they're hot topic adjacent because a lot of us that grew up in that era also were big movie people. And so that's kind of my thought process there. And then lastly, I didn't include interlude. If you read we've done Billie Eilish's um um we've done Billie Eilish's when we all fall asleep where do we go and happier than ever and so when I did when we all fall asleep where do we go and I didn't include the intro song so that's just uh, people are probably gonna be upset but basically if it's under like two two and a half minutes I usually don't include it or if it's just like orchestral just because it's harder to pair and also to me, that's, you know, just think of it as like your let's all go to the lobby um, little bumper. So that should be everything I need to mention up top. So let's go ahead and talk about the movies that I paired these songs with and a little bit of the reason why. So first up, we have Helena that I paired with the Virgin Suicides. Um, and this was actually the first pairing I made for this album. And I think why these two go really well together is that Josh Hartnett slash Michael Paré, who plays adult Josh Hartnett, um, plays Trip Fontaine, um, his thoughts about the Lisbon sisters and like the heartbreak that the deaths left in their wake, I think really aligns with 
some of the thoughts of our narrator in Helena and or Helena, however you want to say it. Um, we'll say, we'll say Helena, we'll say Helena just for the sake of consistency. Um, but I also think that Helena, the song is kind of shrouded in a bit of mystery because even in the music video, we're just at the funeral. We don't know exactly how we got here. You know, like there are obviously, you know, like some allusions to things, but like, we don't know how we got here. And I feel like that's a big theme in, in the VS as well, because we know that they had some sort of pact, you know, and we know that they were, you know, like they obviously had a very sheltered life, but there's still a mystery about what happened and why. And so I thought these two went very well together. Uh, so next up we have Give Em Hell Kid, which I paired with Jawbreaker. I've been holding on to Jawbreaker for a very, very long time. And I felt like this was the perfect place in the LCA series to break it out. Because like I said, I feel like it's very hot topic adjacent. And also, and I say this in the piece, like the Venn diagram for millennials who grew up listening to My Chemical Romance and watching Jawbreaker is basically a circle. I, I truly feel like that. And so I thought this, these two went well together because of this specific set of lyrics just screamed Courtney Shane to me. Um, it's, well, I'm a total wreck and almost every day, like the firing squad or the mess you made, well, don't I look pretty walking down the street in the best damn dress I own? And so it really reminded me of the iconic line from Jawbreaker that I'm going to have to heavily censor because this is on YouTube. But um, when Courtney Shane, after Liz is unalived, tells them to strut their ish down the hallway like everything's peachy freaking keen, um, that, it, that just screamed Courtney Shane to me. And so next up we have To the End as Death Becomes Her. This one was another easy one for me. Death Becomes Her is all about appearances, right? And it's, and, and at its core, that's what To the End is about. You know, like she's driving 90 by the Barbies and Kens, you know, got nasty blisters from the money she spends. Like it's, it's in that same sentimentality, right? Of materialism and keeping up appearances. And things are never what they appear to be. And like My Chemical Romance and Gerard Way are slapping you in the face. <laughs> with like they want us to know that like things are not what they appear to be. And then Death Becomes Her, you know, like you have Madeline, who's played by Meryl Streep, and Ernest, who's played by Bruce Willis. Their marriage is miserable. Helen, who's played by Goldie Hawn, is obsessed with taking revenge while kind of, you know, playing nonchalant, especially at the book signing when she's, you know, trying to seduce Ernest. And just the list goes on and on and on. And I think these two play really nicely off of each other because not only is, you know, it about appearances and materialism, but to the end, like Madeline and Helen's relationship is to the end because they drink the potion, right? Like they're not going anywhere. Like their relationship is, is the core of the film. And so I just thought these were just chef's kiss together. Uh, next up, you have You Don't Know What They Do to Guys Like Us in Prison as Funny Games. This one I know is kind of obscure, but just hear me out. Um, I feel like, you know what, like it matches the chaos of funny games to me. Like specifically, um, so that you may or may not know, I'm watching Hannibal for the first time. And so I've had Michael Pitt on the brain because, you know, he's in a couple episodes but I especially felt like I love both funny games. Like I love the 97 and the 07. The 07 just has a very special place in my heart because I saw it first and like my mom and I loved that movie and like I'm dead serious. My mother loved that movie. We had a really fun time watching it. Um, but I just feel like this song like matches the chaos, particularly of Michael Pitt and Brady Corbett in the remake. And I feel like much like funny games, we don't fully know the intentions or the purpose of events. Like we obviously get running commentary from Michael Pitt and it's a very meta movie, but it at times almost has that stranger's feel of like, because you were home. And so it makes sense in my head. I know this one may not as be, may not be as obvious, but it makes sense in my head. So next up we have one of the most hot topic coded movies of all time. 
which is Donnie Darko, as I'm not okay, I promise. And I knew from the get-go I wanted to throw Donnie Darko in. Like, this is one of the ones, this one and the next movie we're going to talk about, I, they had to be in here. Because I'm like, these are the most Hot Topic coded questions. When you went into Hot Topic in, like, 04, 05, there was always Crow merch. There was Donnie Darko merch. There was Tim Burton merch. And so, like, those were people that I, and films that I knew I really wanted in here. So, I chose I'm Not Okay, I Promise to pair with Donnie Darko because Donnie's character, it, it's the epitome of the song. Like, think about it. You know, he's a teenage kid being told by, like, this demented rabbit figure that the world is going to end in a matter of days after essentially a near unaliving experience. Like, I would be struggling too. And so, you know, and so much happens in Donnie Darko to him. You know, and I mean, if you know the ending, I, I guess I won't spoil a movie that is, you know, way past the statute of limitations on the spoilers is way over. But, you know, if you've seen it, like, especially with the ending, I just think that these are, these are a match made in heaven. So next up, we have The Ghost of You as one of the most hot topic coded movies of all time, if not the most hot topic coded movie, The Crow. And, like, y'all know, I was not about to write a piece about this album and not pair a song with The Crow. And so, to me, I feel like The Ghost of You could fit right into the soundtrack. Also, this music video is great. If you've never seen this music video, it's set in World War II, um, and it's so good. Anyway. I just feel like Eric, who's played by by the late Brandon Lee for half of the movie and then um, another actor for the other half, uh, he could sing this while thinking about Shelly, who's played by Sophia Shings, who, uh, Sheenas, I think it's Sheenas is how you say it, Sheenas, um, and like planning his revenge on their unalivers. Um, if you haven't seen The Crow, just a, qu a quick synopsis is... That um, Eric and Shelly are unalived and then um, Eric actually returns to seek his vengeance on those that unalived them. And it's like very goth, very new metal, very gritty. Um, it also has Ernie Hudson in it. But it, I just thought these were perfect together. And again, I was not about to do this without throwing the crow in there somewhere. So next up we have the Jet Set Life's Gonna Kill You a Seven. And to explain why I picked this, I'm going to have to spoil a movie that is 29 years old. Also, yes, Seven is 29 years old. It was from 1995, which, ay, ay. Uh, but I just want to warn you in advance, if you don't know the ending of Seven, skip ahead to where I talk about Thank You for the Venom. So, this was another, for some reason, this is one of the easiest lights camera albums I've ever done this one was also a pretty immediate and I feel like this song could play as Mills who's played by Brad Pitt reflects back on he and Tracy who's unfortunately played by Gwyneth Paltrow's relationship after John Doe who was played by Kevin Spacey unfortunately unalives her and Mills finds out what's in the box um, I see it as a lament and they could even potentially slow it down, especially with like how trendy that is in horror right now. Like I have no qualms with it, but y'all know that's very trendy right now. Like even on the hero, the heretic trailer that just came out, like they have the, um, the Hollies, um, all I need. So I just think this would work so well because he's not only mourning his wife, but he's also like trying to come to terms with that his own hubris played kind of played a role in this and so I just think they pair nicely together and seven is also I feel hot topic adjacent uh next up we have thank you for the venom is wrist cutters um if you haven't seen this movie I love this movie I have the movie in the graphic novel uh the graphic novel is called pizzeria kamikaze and um I love this movie I love this movie this is probably one of the first like big I guess indie movies that I loved as a teenager if you aren't familiar the premise is that people who unalive themselves are sent to like the specific specter specter sector of the afterlife where like they can't smile everything's like kind of crappy and so 
Uh, Michael, who's played by Shannon Sossaman, who I met when she was very nice when I, I met her at South by, um, she's, it, she's like adamant that she didn't mean to unalive herself. And then, um, Patrick Fugit's character, I can't remember if it's Z or Zai in my head. It's, it's one of those things. I don't know if y'all get this, but as soon as I start recording, I forget how to pronounce every single word I've ever heard. But, um, he's on a mission to find his ex-girlfriend who he believes unalived herself after his unaliving. And overall, I just think this song really matches their intensity. And I just, um, I just really enjoy it. And I think that they, they work nicely together. Uh, so next up, we have Hang 'em High as Repo the Genic Opera. And like, I know Repo was released a few years later than Sweet Revenge. But, like, you want to talk about another Hot Topic coded movie, like, come on. Come on. I love Repo. Um, so, this one, I think, is actually pretty on the nose. Because I could absolutely see Nathan, who's played by Anthony Stewart Head. Shiloh, who's played by Alexa Pena Vega. And uh, Rotti, <laughs> as he says in the movie, played by Paul Servino. Uh, the late Paul Servino, who, the late and great Paul Servino, I should say. I could see them all singing this song during the climax of the film after Nathan is revealed to be the Repo Man. And there are, well, let me rephrase that. After he's revealed to be the Repo Man to Shiloh, because Shiloh is unaware that her father is the Repo Man. Um, if you think I'm, <laughs> let me, to recap, because if you're like, what are you talking about? TLDR, Repo the Genetic, the genetic Opera is set, I think it's like 2056. Um, where like cosmetic surgeries are commonplace and also people who need like organ transplants and things can get them, but at a price. And if you can't, like if you get behind on your payments or you can't pay off for whatever organ you have used, Jinko, who is like this big monopoly of a, of an entity will repossess the organ. And, uh, Roti Largo has three children that are played by, it's, um, Paris Hilton, um, oh my gosh, it's, what's his name from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Paris Hilton, um, anyway, and it's, like, brought by, um, it's a dear, it's a Darren Lynn Bowsman movie, it's, it's very, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's great, and, like, Paris Hilton wears, like, a lot of her own wardrobe, if not all of it, is hers. And so it's just, it's very fun. And it's, it's a musical, it's a horror musical opera. It's so fun. So, to run it back. That's why if you're like, Repo Man. And Anthony Stewart Head, who most of you will know for, is Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, who's an amazing singer, by the way. Um, he's, a, he's one of the Repo Men. So he's like the big Repo Man who will come and cut out organs. And so... Um, his daughter Shiloh is ill and her mother passed away during childbirth. And so Nathan is a doctor, but then he's also indebted to Roddy Largo because he feels responsible for Shiloh's mother's death. And so it's a whole thing, but it's, it's so good. It's so good. Anyway, um, more context than you needed. I think I just secretly wanted to talk about Repo. Anyway, um, so like there are parts of this song that I feel like really speak to like Rotis. I can't not say it like that because that's how Paul Serena says it. Um, his hatred of Nathan, Nathan's mourning of Mari of Marnie, who was his late wife, the betrayal Shiloh feels towards her father, and there's just like this reoccurring line in Hang 'em High that's like, "Would I lie to you?" And it just really drives it home to me because that's a big central theme of this movie. Uh, so next up. We have, it's not a fashion statement, it's a death wish, as Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. And, like, obviously Tim Burton was going to crop up in here somewhere. Like, I was not going to do this Hot Topic coded piece without talking about Tim Burton. Um, and this one is also pretty on the nose. So, like, throughout this song, there are a lot of allusions to vengeance, which is the main theme of Sweeney Todd. You know, the character of Sweeney Todd is a resurrection of Benjamin Barker. And so, you know, he returns to London as Sweeney Todd to exact his revenge for, you know, his wife and his child and everything that was done to him. And there's a set of lyrics that I was like, okay, yeah, I've made the right choice. And it's, I will avenge my ghost with every breath I take. 
I'm coming back from the unalived. I don't know if I can say it. And I'll take you home with me. I'm taking back the life you stole. And so it's just so on the nose for me. So next up, we have Cemetery Drive as Corpse Bride. Because again, we weren't going to do, uh, y'all, I was, I, I grew up in Hot Topic. Like I had Tim Burton merch from Hot Topic. I had a Corpse Bride t-shirt. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and tell you otherwise. <laughs> um, so I know that it's the tale of like someone whose lover <coughs> has taken her own life. And I know that Emily, who's played by Helena Bonham Carter, was unalived, but I still think it works really well because they both have these common themes of tragedy and grief, and they both kind of focus on the aftermath of unaliving from a different vantage point than what we're used to. Because, you know, like, usually in a movie, it's just from the funeral and it's from the other characters' perspectives. And additionally, Emily is mourning the life she was robbed of and she only wants to be loved, which I feel like really aligns with parts of the sentiment of our narrator in Cemetery Drive. And then last but not least, um, I have I Never Told You What I Did as a Living as Lisa Frankenstein. Because again, Lisa Frankenstein is very hot topic coded. And Lisa, who's played by Catherine Newton, also would have loved this album. So I see this song as being 100% from the perspective of the creature who's played by Cole Sprouse. Um, the creature almost immediately falls for Lisa. Like, you know, that's who he runs to after the storm and he's willing to do anything for her, be it, you know, living in her closet or unaliving those who wrong her in some way or the other. And I also just really think that like the poetic and Gothic lyrics of My Chemical Romance really align with this movie you know like how Lisa writes and how a lot of the dialogue is framed and there were two lines that I was like yeah again I've made the right decision which is another knife in my hands a stain that never comes off the sheets and yes I was absolutely picturing the famous castration scene when I um read those so um that piece our lights camera album my, for my chemical romance will be linked in the description box below and also we have so many other albums. We've done Miley Cyrus's Bangers. We've done Endless Summer Vacation. We've done two Billie Eilish albums. We've done Chapel Roan. We've done Fallout Boy, Taylor Swift. Um, there's so many other ones over there for you just over on B-Movies blog. So read up on those. And I'm sure that we'll have another one coming to you soon. And so next up, let's go ahead and dive into our special features because I have several things I want to talk about today. Um, like I told you last week since I was sick, I kind of pushed some stuff to this video because last week's video was already getting so long. Um, but if you're new here, again, 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 uh, special features is the section that we reserve to talk about updates on our favorite analog horror series or horror ARGs, things I want to talk about but I may not necessarily write about or I may not write about yet. And so it's just another perk of subscribing to the YouTube channel. So first up, let's talk about Maxine. So I saw Maxine. It was the first movie I got to see after my plague. Um, I loved it. But I fully called it, I want y'all to look on Instagram, I fully called it that people were going to be divisive and that people were going to say it was the weakest in the trilogy. And I do agree, I will say, I do think it's the weakest in the trilogy, but I still loved it. I To me, it's very De Palma, it's very indulgent, it's very sensual 80s psycho thriller. It almost feels a little bit Verhoeven at times. It, they were all pluses for me. And, like, I can agree also with some of the criticisms. The story is a little wobbly in a couple places. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. But to me, it all works because, again, it's paying homage to the 80s, you know? And, like, thinking of some of the 80s gritty thrillers that I love and that I know a lot of you do, too, to me, it worked. Also, truly... To me, Kevin Bacon and Bobby Cannavale steal just about every scene they're in. And particularly, like, Kevin Bacon, I was blown away. Because, like, obviously Kevin Bacon's done horror, you know, Hollow Man, Tremors, so on and so forth. But this is so good. I I really loved Maxine. Um, again, Pearl is still my favorite. I just, Pearl, something about that movie just... 
it just feeds my little horror soul. But I do recommend Maxine. I did really, really, really enjoy it. And so, so two thumbs up from me. So next up, let's talk about long legs. And by that I mean, it would be a disservice for me to tell you about this film and give a single piece of it away. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into this movie completely blind. Don't read up on this movie. Just go in. I loved this movie. I was very fortunate to not only get to see an early screener, but I got to see an early screener on 35 millimeter and Oz Perkins was there for a Q and a after. So like I got, I was very fortunate on this one that not only did I get to see this movie, but I got to see it early and I got to see it in very, under very cool circumstances. But I've not stopped thinking about this movie since I walked out of the theater. It, here's the one thing I'm having trouble with. I have had several people ask me who are friends of mine who either like horror or are, you know, like starting to kind of get into horror about the gore level. And this has been a hard one for me to define for a couple reasons. Because one, y'all know I watch all kinds of horror stuff. I, I watch it all. Uh, you know, there are some things that I will never touch. Um, I'm sure that there are some movies in the horror community that you can think of that I, I will never touch because I just think they should have not been made. But like, I've seen it all. And so it's hard for me to quantify the gore on this one. I've been kind of been saying somewhere between the silence of the lambs and hereditary. Um, this one's hard because it's unsettling and it is bloody and it's one of the best horror movies come out of 2024 but I don't know because so many people are being unsettled by it but see like for me I just thought it was a really good movie like I didn't lose sleep or anything like that and like I've obviously thought about it but like it didn't get under my skin the way I know it's gotten under other people's skin I just think it's you know unsettling and very 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 good so I would maybe if you really want to see it and you aren't sure about the gore, I would maybe err on the side of caution on this one just because I feel like that mixed with the story might be a lot. So I would maybe like ask one of your friends or maybe, you know, just like go in knowing that it may be a little rough. So that's long legs, but definitely highly recommend that one. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, so next up, I want to talk about A Quiet Place Day 1. I also loved this movie. I've been on a really good streak with horror, um, which I'm hoping will continue next month because we have things like Cuckoo, Strange Darling, which I am so excited for, for especially Strange Darling. I'm very intrigued by Strange Darling. I'm very excited for Cuckoo, don't get me wrong. We all know that I think Dan Stevens is one of the hottest men alive, but... Um, very intrigued. So I'm hoping that this trend continues. But I love this movie. Um, something to know about A Quiet Place Day 1 is that it's, to me, like, it is still a horror movie. Like, I was very much still considered a horror movie. But at its core, it's more of a film about human connection and, like, facing your own mortality. And the creatures are almost a secondary character. Um, and it's just, it's so good. The story's good. The creatures are good. Like, everything is so good. Joseph Quinn and Lupita Nyong'o are incredible together. And it's just so good. And I do want to, for this one, I don't consider this to be a super spoiler because you learn in the first five minutes, but it's not in the trailer. So there is something I do want to warn you about, like as a CWTW, so I'll give you a second to click away. But we learn that in the first five minutes, Lupita Nyong'o's character is in hospice and has what we can assume is cancer. I just want to warn everyone else, because I did not know this. And I went to see this movie the day after my mom's death anniversary, who passed away from cancer for those who don't know so 
and like I'm I'm a freak and so like things like that it was very cathartic for me like I would have loved it regardless but obviously I was a little bit more emotional so I just want to give that warning to anyone who may have had parents who you know unalived from cancer things like that um that that is in this film because it's not in the trailer and for me it was cathartic but for a lot of people I know that that it would be very triggering. So I just want to give you a heads up there. Hello, hi, welcome back, everybody. Spoilers are over. So that's those three. Highly recommend all three of them. Um, very excited to go see. Um, next week we're going to talk about Twisters because I'm going to go see Twist. No, yeah, we will talk about it next week. Um, next week or the week after, it'll depend. Um, then we're going to see Twisters. Very stoked for that. We all know I'm in this weird... Like, with my taste in men lately, because we all know that I'm, I'm queer, but, like, with men, I've been in this weird, like, very basic white man phase of, like, Glenn Powell right now, and, um, I don't know. Anyway, but I'm very excited for that. So, let's go ahead. We have a couple analog horror updates to talk about, and there's a new series I want to talk about as well, but first up, um, new Midwest Angelica Coliseum, which as always, we'll link their channel below. We'll link this video below. So, um, first up, so we start with this correspondence between Doctors Churchill, Spencer, and Michaels. As Dr. Michaels talks about these dreams he's been having ever since the discovery of AZ00, I think three at this point, maybe one. And this is back in the 80s, I should say. So it turns out that Dr. Michaels has been seeing things from like centuries, if not millennia ago, where it feels like he's viewing his life, but he knows it's not him. And so what kind of, what my mind canon is, is if you are familiar with the movie Slither, when Kylie is going to get wormed and it shows those flashes of them like overtaking the planets and stuff. And like, it's clear it's not Kylie's memories, but it's from the vantage point of like they're her memories. That's what my mind canon is. Is like he's having these these dreams of like this hive mind and things they've done, but it's clear it's not him, but it's through his eyes. That's what I, I see. So we learn that these conversations that we're looking at, these are the preliminary conversations about building home and home delta. However, we learn that Dr. Michaels was not informed that Home Delta existed, only Home. And see, we, we recently have only found out that Home Delta existed. And so then we cut to Dr. Churchill giving an overview about Babylon, like, back in 1999. And so he, he talks more about, like, the hive mind of AZ-001. And we learn that why it's so dangerous and powerful is that it, like, keeps memories and track of every single thing it's ever encountered and learned. And so that's kind of why it's such an admirable foe is that it has this excessive memory bank. And so we then learn that they are constructing this thing called the Tower of Babel, which is apparently meant to like give us an advantage in this, in this warfare against these creatures. And so, you know, we see more blueprints for some other sites and equipment meant to like combat this invasion and the assimilation and then throughout these demos with this equipment, we kind of see that we're basically screwed <laughs> because like all of these entities are too powerful. And we see like all of these soldiers just meet tragic fate after tragic fate <laughs> when they're attempting to battle these entities. And so then we cut to, if you remember the end of the last episode, they put Dr. Spencer in, basically they put him on ice, <laughs> literally on ice. And Dr. Churchill begins to tell him like he's going to be in charge of like the Tower of Babel and Babylon and like it, it seems like there's going to be some sort of mind control that he's going to have. And so the video ends with us learning about the Akashic Probe, which will be able to like, they kind of, their, their mind palace of AZ-001, if I'm understanding, it's kind of like on this Akashic plane and it's this way for us to penetrate into it. And so anyway, I think we're getting, I think we're on the precipice of something really, really big with Midwest Angelica. I feel like we're gearing up for either the Act 2 finale or the Act 2 mid-season finale, if you will. Um, either way, I love this series. I think it's so cool. 
and it's just so well made and it's just we've talked about this before but like there's not I don't really have anything to compare it to and it's just really 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 cool and I love that we're getting into more sci-fi -y stuff now I think that works really well with it and so definitely subscribe to Midwest Angelica if you aren't and give their video some love because the product is great so next up so vintage eight hi hello um we have the incomplete people follow up and like vintage eight i love this idea this is this is a very nifty idea um it reminds me kind of like early early to mid aughts youtube where vintage eight lets us know that some of his subscribers have started seeing i'm not i shouldn't say that because that, they, they're real stories have started seeing there we go let me use air quotes right um incomplete people and he shares some of their stories with us. And so Vintage Aid is encouraging any of us who have started seeing incomplete people to send him an email at do you see incomplete people at gmail.com. And this is very fun. I think this is very fun. I think this is very clever. Um, it's a very clever way to get your audience to participate and see what the incomplete people, if you remember from last week's video, the whole thing is like, only the person who's being, it's like it follows, right? Where like only the people affect, affected can see it. So it's very innovative because people can just take a photo of a room and be like, oh my gosh, do you see it? This is very fun. Um, Vijay, you know, we're big fans. This, this is very fun. This is very fun. I really, really like this concept a lot um, and I'm excited to see what else comes out of it. So next up and the last thing that we have for Today's special features is Morley Grove. And we all know I love Gemini Home Entertainment. Love it. It's probably one of, if not my favorite, um, analog horror series. I think it's absolutely one of, if not the best. Love it. Love her. Uh, so its creator, Remy Abode, has started another series called Morley Grove. And I say has started, it's been out for a while. Um, and it reminds me of like the early and wild, wild west days of YouTube where, you know, people would upload creepy f videos. You know, it, it for some reason reminded me of Ghost Car, which I still use to scare my sister from time to time because she will forget what the video is and I'll just send her the link cold. But um, there seems to be something lurking in, in Morley Grove and children are always going missing. And so think about like early internet urban legends, viral creepy videos, scare, the scary video compilations that are still around today. And it'll give you a taste of, of Morley Grove. And so Remy Abode did post a video a few months back letting us know that his laptop is broken. That's why there haven't been a a lot of updates for Morley Grove or Gemini Home Entertainment. Um, but Remy, like, we totally understand that life happens. Take your time. We'll be waiting here whenever your laptop is fixed or if, when you're ready to post more content. Uh, but this series, what's up so far is great. Gemini Home Entertainment, there's a lot to dive into there too. So what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and link um, Remy's channel, which is where Morley Grove lives and the Gemini Home Entertainment channel. It has a separate channel in the description box. And I'm also going to link this piece I wrote for Hyper Rule Film Club about analog horror that somehow I'm quoted for on the official Wikipedia page for Gemini Home Entertainment, which is one of the wildest things to ever happen to me. Um, but I do want to note one thing really quick. So in that analog horror piece, and I've said this before, the Mandela catalog is listed. This piece was written a couple of years ago. So just know we are still not covering the Mandela catalog with the Alex Kister allegations. I, I no, we, we will not be covering anything here. So just know that that was written pre, pre what happened. So last but not least, let's dive into today's subtitles, which are just little pieces of pop culture news from around the internet that I think are exciting and fun. Uh, so first up, speaking of fashion forward movies, as I mentioned earlier, um, a sequel to Devil Wears Prada is allegedly in the works with um, Aileen Brash McKenna, who you might know as she worked with um, Rachel Bloom on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. She's, she's a great screenwriter um, and comedy writer. Um, so she wrote the original screenplay for Devil Wears Prada 
which I believe was based on a book, but you know what I mean. Um, David Frankel, who's the director, and Wendy Feinerman may all be returning with the rumored plot to involve Miranda Priestly combating the decline of print media. And um, now there's been an update, I think as of yesterday, where Meryl Streep said Miranda Priestly is going to return in the second one. So I'm interested to see how this turns out. Um, one of my very favorite pieces of news this week, VHS Beyond will be coming to Shudder on October 4th. We know I love the VHS series, um, except for Viral, and you know, I thought 85 was fine. But I, I love this, I, I just love the concept of VHS. Um, and the directors, um, that will be lending their voices to this, um, installment are Jordan Downey, Christian and Justin Long. And yes, as in our favorite screen queen, Justin Long, um, Justin Martinez, uh, Virat Paul or Pal, I'm not sure. Uh, Kate Siegel as in Kate Siegel from all of the Mike Flanagan properties, that Kate Siegel. And it said a special presentation by uh, Jay Cheel. So I'm excited. I'm very excited, especially like we know, like I'm sure, you know, like I'm sure all these segments are going to be great, but we know like personally the two that I am, I'm the most intrigued by are the Kate Siegel and the Christian and Justin Long segments. I'm very intrigued because we know Justin Long has been in a lot of horror, but I don't think he's ever directed anything horror related. So I'm very intrigued to see how that goes. I, in my head, I think it's going to be a horror comedy is what I feel, but we will see. Um, the teaser trailer for Severance Season 2 has dropped after they did a cute little, they took like a, a note out of the analog horror book and gave us an elevator that flashed um, in Morse code tomorrow. And so we got a teaser trailer the next day. And the release date has also been announced, which is January 17th, 2025. Super stoked. Love the first season. If you've not seen the first season, now is the time to watch it. It's excellent. I think it is one of the best shows streaming. Uh, it's up there with the bear for me. Uh, so next up, Sam Raimi is set to direct and produce a new horror film called Send Help. That's being compared <laughs> and being described as a mix of misery and castaway, which sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I okay. Um, a Lilith Fair documentary is in the works from Dan Levy and Elevation Pictures. Very excited about that. Um, Rachel Bloom's One Woman Show, Death Let Me Do My Show, is coming to Netflix, which I'm so excited about because I love her. Um, we have Code Orange stuff. Um, more Halloween candy releases have been announced uh, with Twizzler Ghost. The little ghost made out of Twizzlers. They're so cute. Um, Haribo Gold Bears Fall Edition, which look like, I couldn't tell from what I could see if they're just gummy bears in fall colors or if they are a different shape. Either way, stoked. We'll take it. Uh, Mike and Ike Sour Spooky Treats and White Chocolate Pumpkin Pie M&Ms. And see, one of my red flags is one of my favorite candies is my, or Mike and Ike's. And so I'm very excited for those. Um... The first trailer for A24's We Live in Time, starring Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh, has dropped. I don't know about y'all, I'm ready to ball my eyes out in a movie theater, because I'm sure it's going to end. We can all probably guess how it's going to end, but very stoked for that. Um, Screenbox has announced that Haunted Ulster Live will drop on their platform this October. I think it's been trying to get a release since last year on a streamer, so that's super exciting. From the teaser and things I've read, it's very much in like a Ghost Watch vein, but we know how much I love Ghost Watch, so very excited. Um, the teaser trailer for The Substance has been released, and I'm pumped because I have been very intrigued by that movie ever since I first heard about it, so very excited to see where that goes. Um, Blumhouse dropped a cryptic reel on Instagram. That seems to allude to a new installment in the Sinister franchise, which that first, the first Sinister, I always forget how absolutely that movie, whoo, that's a good horror movie, baby. That first one, whoo-wee, is it good? And I always forget how good it is until I rewatch it. And I'm like, man, this is good. So I will definitely take a new installment in the Sinister franchise. 
Um, a fifth installment in the Hell House LLC franchise has been announced called Hell House LLC Lineage with a teaser trailer and it has been, a uh, it will arrive to, uh, Shudder next October. So October, October of 2025. I love all of the Hell Houses. I truly do. Um, I, I really, really do. I love this series a lot. It's very near and dear to my heart. And so I will always take a new one. I thought the one that came out last year was incredible. Um, and in sad news, two sad things, um, one obviously very much more upsetting than the other, um, Redbox has announced that it will be shutting down, which does break my heart a little bit because I loved me some Redbox. Like, um, the small town that I lived in, I used that Redbox all the time when my parents moved to another even smaller town. I would use that Redbox all the time when I would go to visit my mom, um, and, um, I red boxed a lot cause I, one of my first jobs out of college was at HEB and there was a red box right outside. So I would grab a movie and, you know, just drop it off at work the next day. Um, so it's the end of an era. And then in very, very sad news, um, as many of you know, Shelly Duvall did pass away this week. Um, if you're like me, I grew up watching all of her children's stuff. Um, you know, I love The Shining and I just want to say RIP. I hope she's at peace. And that will do us for today's video. Um, be sure to uh, follow us on Instagram at BMovies Channel. Again, that's where we post Bite Size Sundays. We post uh, basically daily, um, every day except for Saturday usually. But now since we're doing videos, we will be posting every day. So I take that back. Um, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Lisa underscore Frankenstein underscore. Feel free to follow Elliot at reading dot with dot red. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed. It is free. Uh, give us a like if you feel so inclined and leave a comment if you're feeling frisky. And so other than that, just a reminder, again, we are switching to Saturday releases. So, and, and again, unless... There was a post on Instagram saying there's not going to be a video that week. Know that there's will be a video. It just sometimes we get wrapped up in some reviews or just life. Um, so yeah, I think on that note, all that's left to do is fade to black.